Hey up guys, so welcome back to another vlog uh, and as you can see I'm going to be talking about some of my equipment in particular my trainer rotation and why I feel it's important to uh, actually have a trainer rotation so what exactly is trainer rotation? so it is literally uh, using more than one pair of trainers throughout the week for your different kind of training instances scenarios, races whether it's easy runs, long runs, whether it's uh, tempo runs or a bit of speed work. So yeah, it's actually using different uh, pairs of trainers for different types of jobs. So there's a number of reasons why we actually try and encourage trainer rotation. So uh, reason number one is the more pairs of trainers you actually own per season, the longer they will last. In actual fact, some of my trainers are now three seasons long. Um, and that is because uh, if you wear them, more infrequently um, you will actually put less wear and tear on them and what I mean by that is so if I was to get uh, these trainers for instance uh, what actually happens is I mean these are quite soft so when you go running it can take up to or even longer than 24 hours for that foam to get back to shape therefore if it's not fully in shape um, you can actually wear those out a lot quicker uh, and you can actually change uh, your running mechanics which may actually cause a overuse or um, a different type of injury, something like a compensation injury. So yeah, if you can uh, swap your trainers around, you will actually get more miles out of them because basically less wear and tear on the sole. So there's a few reasons why we actually have a uh, trainer rotation. Um, so yeah, what I'm gonna do is actually stick in a, a video now to explain. So I'd like to use the analogy of using screwdrivers to explain why we need different trainers for different jobs. Now, a screwdriver is a screwdriver, right? Wrong. So, we have different types of screwdrivers for different types of work. So, if we, uh, yeah, try and use this one. Too big. This one. Wrong type. This one, perfect, and that's why we have different screwdrivers or different trainers for different types of work. Back to the staircase. So now I'll actually explain my trainers and why I use different pairs for different jobs if you understood that analogy. So first of all, uh, these first three pair of trainers are all actually uh, Hoka Clifton's. Now these are my staple uh, running shoe. Uh, so yeah, first of all, I actually have this black pair. So these are my newest um, Hoka Clifton's. Um, so I actually use these for mainly my long runs. So yesterday, was my 25 kilometer easy run where I did 5 by 5 K um, and made it quite specific in the sense that I'm doing uh, Ironman Wales so every 5 K um, on the treadmill I just put it up uh, the incline by half a percent uh, running at the same pace um, just basically raising the heart rate so anything that's kind of long easy I use these Clifton's uh, basically the main mileage shoe now the reason I like these is because they're very comfortable, they're very stable, um, they are quite firm but also soft if that makes sense so they don't kind of collapse under your feet but they're absolutely fantastic. Um, they're not the most expensive trainer out there so they're great to actually rack up the mileage. Um, so yeah, uh, these are the ones that I'm currently using for my long runs, in particular if it's dry outside. I mean, yeah, we're, we're in the UK summer right now, but it has rained every single day this week. But yeah, so I'll use these on the treadmill or yeah, outside for my dry mileage. Basically, it's because they're my nicest pair, my newest pair, and I don't want to get them messed up too much. So yeah. Next up, uh, slightly older. Um, so yeah, again, Hoka Clifton's, so I will use these now if the weather's a little bit poor outside. Um, so yeah, um, back end of the spring I was using these, in the winter I was using these. And I will also use these for warm-ups and cool-downs on the track, 
or if I'm doing some tempo work, I will also use these for uh, warm up and cool downs as well. Uh, that's because they're nice and soft, nice and broken. They still have a bit of mileage left in them, and yeah, um, I actually go running on the grass track, so yeah, it enables them to get a bit more dirtier, uh, and also outside uh, when it's pissing down with rain. So yeah, still got a little bit of life left in those, but yeah, exactly the same shoe and used for the exact same reasons. So these are my oldest pair of Oka Clifton's, the first pair I had. Um, these was uh, bought back end of last year. I've actually retired these as a running shoe now. As you can see that the sole is pretty much gone. Um, but yeah, I still use these for gym work. So if I was to do something like some specific running strength and conditioning in the gym, calf raises or lunging onto a bossu ball just to kind of help that uh, running dynamics, running mechanics. Um, yeah, basically these are, the, uh, these are the shoes that I wear. The reason I do that is so my foot has a similar kind of base to land on. So yeah, I'm basically uh, trying to promote my running mechanics in the shoes that I'm using. And the best way of doing that is by doing it in a pair of shoes that you are using, simple as that. Yeah, um, these actually had 800 kilometers in them before I retired them. So I don't know if you realize, but on training peaks, you can actually log uh, what equipment you're using at the end of each session. And then it kind of tallies up uh, at the end of the season, how much mileage you're putting into shoes. Now, they kind of say you should be running about 500 kilometers, but yeah, I don't know if it's because I'm a tight Yorkshireman, but I got a lot more out of these uh, before I decided to retire them. But yeah, absolute staple shoe within my training. Um, so yeah, that's uh, my, first pair of, uh, my first pair of Clifton's. So next up is my Hoka Carbon X1s. These were the first pair of carbon shoes I ever owned. So I bought these, uh, I can't remember if it was back end of last season or the season before. I can't remember. I know I've not done a great deal of mileage in them. Um, I tend to use these now for training, so things like uh, doing brick sessions, a 15 minute quick uh, run off the bike, in particular midweek if I've got a clinic on where I'm a bit short for time. Um, I also wear these, so let's say for instance I'm doing a long run uh, and I'm breaking it up into segments, I'll maybe put them on for the last couple of uh, intervals just to kind of get the feel for running in carbon shoes but not actually running the whole entire session in carbon shoes. So yeah, uh, gets your race ready, gets a, a stimulus to your, to your joints, muscles and tendons, um, but yeah, it doesn't actually then wreck uh, your hips, which they do tend to do. Um, so yeah, um, that's why I use these for now. Um, it's a shame that they're not in orange, as you can see most of my trainers are. Um, I like to have a little bit of orange on there, but at the time this was, that was all that was available. But yeah, um, I still use these for racing if I do a half. Um, they are nice and light, they go on your feet. I can actually run in these without socks, which is quite good. Um, but yeah, that's my first pair of carbons. And uh, as you can actually see, um, it's got this kind of curvature. And what that really does is really promote you onto your toes and spring it off, which uh, yeah, what carbon shoes are designed to do. So next up, uh, is my Hoka Rincon Freeze. Absolutely fantastic shoe. Uh, a little bit heavier than the Carbons. Uh, a little bit more kind of stiffer than the Carbons. Uh, but I use these for my tempo runs. If I'm doing like, I don't know, three times 10 minutes, three times 15 minutes. I use these for my speed work. So they, they um, a bit more aggressive than the Clifton. Um, or they're a faster shoe than the Clifton, but they're uh, not quite uh, as stiff as the Carbon, if that kind of makes sense. So yeah, they 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 they're stable on the foot, but what what they actually have is this kind of like meta rocker here. Um, I don't know the actual term. I know Asics use their term meta rocker, but what it actually does, it really promotes you up onto that toe, as you can see. Um, when I do wear these, uh, my calves do tend to get doms in them for a couple of days afterwards. Um, so yeah, they really kind of overstimulate uh, your running mechanics, really drives you up onto your toes, get those knees up, and they're fantastic for speed work. I wouldn't want to run in these for every session. Um, 
yeah, you'd literally be having the doms all the time. Um, best way of describing them is like wearing track spikes. They kind of like, yeah, give you that same feeling. But yeah, that's what I tend to use for my speed work. And they're the Hoka Rincons. Fantastic shoe. So next up are my Hoka Carbon X Freeze. Absolutely fantastic shoe. Uh, these are my newest shoe. And if I was to design a shoe, they would be 95% uh, perfect. I'll just get rid of that uh, yeah, pink bit because I just love uh, all the orange. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, very similar to the Carbonek ones uh, in, in the sense that they get you up on your toes. Uh, what I actually used these for was uh, Challenge Roth. That was the first time I raced in these. I had used them for training just to kind of get used to them a little bit um, on the back end of some long runs. Uh, and I've also used them in a couple of brick sessions. But yeah, um, albeit they, uh, I didn't do them justice because of uh, the heat problem. Um, what I did find is uh, from, a, from a muscular endurance point of view, I was still holding form right throughout the yeah, entire marathon. I didn't have muscle fatigue, joint fatigue, tendon fatigue. Um, in actual fact, I've got a picture of me uh, yeah, floating in the air uh, across the finish line, which is fantastic. But yeah, um, hopefully I can do these a bit more justice uh, in Ironman Wales, but yeah, absolutely fantastic. And these are my uh, race shoe. Um, really, really comfortable. Um, I wear these with socks. Um, I have tried them without, but yeah, they're a little bit more of a rougher material than the Carbon X ones. But yeah, you're better off just wearing socks in the longer uh, marathons or half marathons anyway. But yeah, absolutely fantastic shoe and uh, absolute perfection to run in. So just so you realise that I'm not sponsored by Hoka, although I would love to be, um, yeah, um, all of these are my own personal preference and why I choose them out of choice, not because I'm sponsored, um, but yeah, uh, these are Soconi uh, Peregrine, uh, I think these are the, the 11s, yeah, the 11s, um, and these are my trail shoe, so yeah, obviously in the winter months when I'm trail running around these Yorkshire, these gives me an absolute fantastic grip on tree roots. Um, I also race in these, so um, I did Xterra for the first time early in the year and uh, yeah also I did uh, Slate Man in these last year where I came fourth unfortunately, worst place in the world to come. Um, but yeah, um, if it's not broke why try and fix it? So these are the third uh, pair I've had on the trot, I've had the 9s, the 10s and the 11s, absolutely fantastic, I love these shoes, they are heavy but they're really really stable but yeah they grip to uh, uh, grip to, to everything like shit to a blanket, they're absolutely fantastic so yeah I can't see me ever changing those, uh, I've not actually tried the Hoka Speed Goats or anything like that because I'm just so happy with these shoe. I'm going to stick with them, so yeah they're my trail shoes. <laughs> So last up is uh, the ASICs, so before I moved over to Hoka, uh, and this is probably a good uh, time to drop in biomechanics, um, is because yeah, uh, when they brought in the flight foam, um, they really didn't suit my biomechanics. Now historically, right through uh, probably the first six, seven years of my triathlon career, I always wore ASICs, I often bought the ASICs try nooses for training in and use their hyperspeeds for racing in. Now if, if, if try noosa and hyperspeed was to have a baby this would be the offspring. So these are the, um, uh, the noosa hyperspeeds. So they are a specific triathlon shoe. Um, so last time I raced in these would be the, um, the Yorkshire Relay Championships where we won. Um, I'll stick a picture in now, but yeah, I've kept these because they've got lots of life in them. Um, they are great for short course triathlon if I ever return back to them. Um, but yeah, um, they're fantastic to be fair. But what actually happened is um, ASICS brought in Flight Foam. Um, so Flight Foam was way too spongy uh, for, for, for my feet. And I am actually a... Uh, high arch foot person, so I've got a high arch, um, so what happens is when I'm walking my uh, my feet pronate and collapse in, um, so if I was like walking in these these, these uh, ASICs they would certainly collapse in, the hookers don't tend to do that even though they are all neutral, but when I actually run um, what happens is I uh, land on my little toe, they then roll in 
it then comes down a little bit but only to about this point and then I then spring back off so my mid foot or uh, back of my foot heel strike uh, never never actually occurs so um, yeah a lot of people do heel strike and roll through and bounce some people land mid foot roll through and bounce off I just land on my toe roll in and bounce back off and again and I'll, I'll put a little video in there so I am supposed to wear supported shoes however what we found when we was doing the biomechanics is because I got strike, uh, quite strong feet I didn't need that support because I land and then I kind of get to this point so the arch doesn't actually come into play therefore when I'm running I don't get much of a penation with the hookers however with the new flight foam in the ASICs I was really kind of like yeah rolling in uh, twisting some of the older ASICs started to split where you could see where the twist um, yeah so there was no longer any good for my running uh, mechanics so that's the reason I changed over to hooker and uh, yeah touch wood I've not had a problem since but yeah so basically that is uh, my tra uh, trainer rotation uh, I hope you understand a little bit more uh, about it and I hope uh, yeah it encourages you to go out and get yourself a couple more uh, pairs of trainers because you really will kind of make them last a lot longer and uh, yeah actually uh, reduce your injury risk so yeah as always please uh, like and subscribe because uh, yeah the more we get the channel up and running uh, the more fantastic videos I, I can uh, put out there so yeah thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time